Hi, this is Dr. Alemi with a brief lecture on how to compare the means of three groups or three samples. The procedure we use is often called analysis of variance or ANOVA for short. We are using a one-way ano analysis of variance to compare three or more groups defined by a single measure that they differ. Sometimes there are multiple measures that the groups differ on and those are called uh, factorial analysis of variance or two-way or higher um, ways of doing analysis of variance. Now recall that we have shown you how to do t-test where we can compare two groups at a time. Now you a person might say well if we have two groups why don't we just we, why don't we just do repeated t-test. Repeated t-test increase the chance of type 1 error or m because of multiple comparison problems. If you're making comparison let's say between five groups you will need about 10 comparisons of means. When the null hypothesis is true the probability that at least one of the 10 observed significance level is less than 0 0.05 is about 0 0.29 nearly one-third. In other words, 29% chance that at least one test will yield a significant result even when the null hypothesis is in fact true. This is not right and therefore we shouldn't do repeated t-test. So if we want to do, uh, comp if we want to compare uh, means of three groups, we follow our framework for hypothesis testing. Recall that the framework starts with testing of assumptions, stating the null hypothesis, calculating the statistics, looking up the p-value, and rejecting or failing to reject. Now we want to use this fr framework in the context of one-way analysis of variance, and the following lecture shows you how to do so. First we test the assumptions. There are three important assumptions that should be tested. One is that the sam random we have independent random samples that have been taken from each population that the samples are independent from each other and the observations are independent from each other within the populations second that the dependent variable population is normally distributed and third that the population variances are equal the next step in our framework is to state the hypothesis. In the context of uh, comparisons of three means, the null hypothesis is always said as equality. So here we show that the null hypothesis for comparisons of four means is that all four means are equal. The alternative hypothesis is that the null hypothesis is not true. So this could occur when one of the means are different. Notice that it doesn't require that all of them are different from each other, just one of them. Because our null hypothesis is an equality and all alternative is an equality, is not equal, then uh, we are doing a two-sided test. The next step is to calculate the, the, the test the statistics. Now, in analysis of variance, the test, the concept of the test statistic is a little bit more complicated and we need to take a few moments to understand this. It's based on a F distribution, uh, chi-square distribution, and uh, uh, it is conceptually the ratio of between group variability divided by within group variability. So the source of within group variability is the individual differences. The source of between group variability is the effect of the group being. Within group variability is sampling error across the cases and between group variability is the effect of independent groups or variables. Analysis of variance involves the partitioning of the variance of the dependent variable into different components are two components, the between group variability and within group variability. More specifically, the analysis of variance is a method of partitioning the total sum of squares, 
recall that to sum of squares is the is the difference each square is the residual and sum of squares is how we usually measure uh, the concept of variance and so this total sum of squares is divided into additive and independent parts let's take a look the total sum of squares is calculated by uh, subtracting the observation from the grand average, squaring it, and summing it for all observations. Here we see p groups, groups going from 1 to p, and there are n cases. And for each case, we ha and each within each group, we have an observation. So case 1 is shown as x11. So what we are saying here is that the first thing we do is that the observ find the difference of the observation and the grand average and square that and do this for all of the observations and we call this the total sum of squares. The between sum of between groups sum of squares is calculated by looking at the observation in the group J and subtract which is the mean of the group J and subtracting from that the grand average and squaring that. So here we are looking at how the average of the group J is doing compared to the grand average and that's called the between group sum of squares. And within group sum of squares is to look at the observations minus the, the group average. So here, for example, the group 1 would be the average of the group 1 would be from x11 through x1n, and it, that would be shown at x bar sub one, subscript 1. And we would subtract each average, or each observation in group 1 from its own average. And that's called within groups sum of squares. So in partitioning the variance, we are saying that sum of square, the total sum of square is always equal to the sum of square between groups plus the sum of square within groups. Now we can start thinking about the calculation of the test statistics. By dividing the sum of square deviations by degrees of freedom, we are essentially computing an average or mean amount of variation. The specific name for the numerator of the F statistic is the mean square between the average amount of between group variation. The specific name for the denominator of the F statistic is the mean square within the average amount of within group variation. So in the last equation we needed to l define what, what, what do we mean by degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom for between group is equal to the number of groups minus 1 and degrees of freedom within group is equal to the number of observations minus k which is the number of groups. The next step in after we have calculated the F statistics is to reject or fail to reject. Typically we will reject if the critical F value let's say at po the, that's the F value at the alpha level of 0.05 alpha level is the significance level if the critical F value is greater than the uh, if the calculated F value is greater than the critical F value shown here as F sub alpha then we will reject the hypothesis so if we get a F value that's bigger than the F value associated with 5% uh, chance of error, then we will say, well, that probability is smaller than 5%, so we are going to reject that hi null hypothesis. Otherwise, we cannot reject the null hypothesis. Let's take a look at an example. Suppose we had patients that we were following in 4W West uh, in our hospital and 4 East and on the third floor. So we have three groups of patients. We have examine the satisfaction rating of 15 patients in total that are randomly selected from these three groups 
and their satisfaction levels are measured. The dependent variable in this analysis is the satisfaction scores. It ranges from 0, not satisfied, to 10, extremely satisfied. The independent variable is the treatment conditions. There, and in this situation, we have three different groups, one at each location of the hospital. This is our data. Group 1, Group 2, and Group 3 show the satisfaction levels at different groups. The mean is shown, and now we can calculate the analysis of variance and the F statistics. First, we have to, of course, check our assumptions. I'm going to assume that you're going to verify the assumptions of independence and move on quickly to the check of the how the F statistic is calculated. First, we calculate the sum of square within. Notice how we calculate this. This is, for example, for group 1. We take all of the observation in group 1 and subtract from it the average for group 1 and square that and sum it. So in group 1, we have 20 for sum of square for within group 1. Sum of square within group 2 is 10. And sum of square within group 3 is 16. This shows that there was more variation in group 1 than than group 3, and the least variation was in group 2. Then we look at sum of square between groups. Here, what we are doing is we're taking the average of the group and subtracting from the grand average and squaring and multiplying by the number of cases in each group. So we see that the sum of square between groups is 70. And we can verify that the sum of squares total, which is the difference between each observation and grand average, is equal to 116. And this is, in fact, the same as sum of square between plus the sum of square within, which is 116 equals 70 plus 46. Now that we have these sum of squares, we can start looking at the F statistics. The degrees of freedom for between groups, there's three groups, so we're looking at two degrees of freedom. And degrees of freedom within groups, there are 15 observations, and there are three groups, so we're looking at 12 degrees of freedom. The mean sum of square between is the sum of square divided by the degrees of freedom, which is 35. The mean sum of square within is 46 divided by 12 which is 3.83. So the calculated F statistic is the ratio of these two mean sum of squares, and that is equal to 9.13. Now we look up the critical value for uh, sig significance level of 0.05. The F statistic can be looked up in a F table, and it, it is 3.88. Because our calculated F statistic is larger than the critical F value, we can now reject the null hypothesis that the three hospital units have the same satisfaction levels. In this brief lecture, you have learned how to take, how to compare means of three or more samples.